Hi there. In this video I'll explain the operation of a temperature controlled circuit containing a thermistor and MOSFET. Here's an example from the 2014 National 5 paper. A thermistor is used as a temperature sensor and a circuit to monitor and control the temperature of water in a tank. Part of the circuit is shown. E part 1 says the variable resistor R is set at a resistance of 1050 ohms and then asks us to calculate the resistance of the thermistor when the voltage across the thermistor is 2 volts. Let's get more space to work out the answer. So this isn't the full circuit that we'll come to later. This is just a voltage divider. We'll call the variable resistor R1 and the thermistor R2. And a voltage divider, remember, the supply voltage, 5 volts in this case, is divided between the two resistors. So we have voltage V1 across the top resistor, the variable resistor, and V2 across the bottom resistor, the thermistor. These quantities are linked by the equation V1 divided by V2 is equal to R1 divided by R2. So the ratio of the voltages is equal to the ratio of the resistances in the voltage divider. We're told that the resistance of the variable resistor is 1050 ohms, and the voltage across the thermistor is 2 volts. This must mean that the voltage across the variable resistor is equal to the supply voltage, 5 volts, minus 2 which equals 3 volts. We can now substitute these values into our equation. To calculate R2, the resistance of the thermistor, we can cross multiply. Top left multiplied by bottom right is equal to the bottom left multiplied by the top right. So we get 3 R2 is equal to 2 times 1050. If we then divide both sides by 3, we get an equation for R2, which is equal to 2 times 1050 divided by 3, which equals 700 ohms. A part 2 contains a graph which shows how the resistance of the thermistor varies with temperature. We're asked to determine the temperature of the water when the voltage across the thermistor is 2 volts. All we have to do is find our answer from the previous question, 700 ohms, on the y-axis. Then draw along until we meet the line. And then down, so the temperature of the water is 80 degrees Celsius. This is B part 1. The circuit is now connected to a switching circuit to operate a heater. And we're asked to explain how the circuit operates to switch on the heater when the temperature falls below a certain value. So this is the MOSFET. It acts like a voltage operated switch in these circuits. And this is our voltage divider from before. The voltage across the bottom component, the thermistor in this case, is very important because it's also the voltage between the gate and the source of the MOSFET. If this voltage increases above a certain value, then the MOSFET conducts, and anything connected in series with it, here we have a relay, will operate. We need to get the voltage across the thermistor to increase above a certain value for the MOSFET to conduct, and for this to happen, the resistance of the thermistor would have to increase. Remember that a thermistor's resistance decreases as temperature increases, so if we want its resistance to increase, then we'd have to cool it down. To answer the question then, we'd write something like this. As temperature decreases, the resistance of the thermistor increases, and the voltage across the thermistor increases. Now it's important to make it clear that we're talking about the resistance of the thermistor and the voltage across the thermistor. When this voltage increases above a certain value, the MOSFET conducts. We're almost done. Watch the relay switch. With a current in the relay coil, the relay switch closes, so the heater is now on. B part 2 says the resistance of the variable resistor R is now increased. What effect does this have on the temperature at which the heater is switched on? You must justify your answer. If the resistance of the variable resistor increases, then the voltage across it will also increase. This means that the voltage across the thermistor will now decrease and the MOSFET will no longer conduct. If we want the MOSFET to conduct now, then we'll need to increase the voltage across the thermistor. To do this, we need to increase the thermistor's resistance. We'll have to reduce the temperature of the thermistor. Our answer then is that the heater now switches on at a lower temperature. We'd also need to say that the resistance of the thermistor must be greater to switch on the MOSFET. Now I know what you're thinking at this point. You're wondering... What would happen if we switch the positions of the thermistor and variable resistor in B part 1? 
course you are. Let's take a look. Remember we were asked to explain how the circuit operates to switch on the heater when the temperature falls below a certain value. When we switch the positions of the variable resistor and thermistor, we actually get a circuit which would switch on the heater when the temperature rises above a certain value. So we'd reword the question like this. Now we've got a heater which switches on when it gets hot, which isn't much use. So we'll swap it for a buzzer. This circuit could be part of a fire alarm or could be placed inside a fridge to warn that the temperature is too high. Here's how it works. As temperature increases, the resistance of the thermistor decreases. This means that the voltage across the thermistor decreases. Remember it's the voltage across the bottom component that's important. It needs to increase above a certain value before the MOSFET conducts. So when the voltage across the thermistor decreases, this causes the voltage across the variable resistor, the bottom component, to increase. When this voltage rises above a certain value, the MOSFET conducts. And the buzzer buzzes. And that's us for now. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.